and not, you know, rear in the truck that was ahead of us. So we came to a stop. In my mind, I'm like, hmm, this is the beginnings of a pileup. And oh, behold, my trainer said, he said, oh, hold on, dude. And we get smashed behind by two trucks. At the time, I didn't know it was two trucks until I saw the uh, in cab footage. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. Oh, hold on, dude. Well, you there know you what? Go. I'm, about, I'm, about, to, I'm yep. about to tell you right now. I beat up people's names, so I'm about to apologize in advance. So let's go ahead and uh, do oh, this, yeah. man. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. Hey, let's get into it, man. Kevin Hinky in the building. <laughs> All right, my guy. So hold on. What's going on? What's going on? I appreciate you stepping up in the podcast with me today, man. Why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, say your name, uh, age, status, and trucking, and where you from, my guy? I'm from, I live in Wilmington, Delaware. I'm from Baltimore originally. Uh, my name's Kevin Hickey. Should have did it the other way. <laughs> but anyway, um, my name's Kevin Hickey. Uh, I've been trucking for like 23 years, off and on. Um, started in 2000. My uncle got me into it. Started off with a company, uh, MS Carries. Um, trained there. That was funny because my my trainer played practical jokes on me the whole time I was training. I was 21. <laughs> they sent me. Uh, what they did was, huh? I said, was that a good thing or or? Or a bad well, day. I well, how you I was always how, told how you how you felt about it. Well, he pissed me off the first time when he told me what he was going to do. But I was young in the business, so I was so damn terrified. <laughs> and like he didn't do what he did was <clears throat> what he did was like every now and again. Uh, one thing he did, he he uh, uh, he was greasing the fifth wheel. And he was like, hey, look, I'm going to have him go have you grease the fifth wheel. Um, you know, some things you have to do when you're out on the road, this, that, and the other. And he said, well, he kept his truck immaculate. His truck was immaculate. It was the cleanest truck I've ever seen in my life. So what he did was, he said, don't get any grease anywhere by the cab. I'm like, okay. So behind my back, he had grease on his hand. He put the grease on my side on the uh, handrail. So when I was going to get done greasing, he was checking the tires. I acted like he was checking the tires. Then I turned around like, oh, shit, there's grease on the house. I don't remember it coming back all the way back this way. And he walked up and said, I told you don't get no grease on the cab. And he acted like he got mad with me. <laughs> so I was like, oh, fuck. I said, oh, man. I said, man, they're going to get me out of here. You're going to give me bad reports and everything. So he said, look, I'm, look, just don't do anything else. That's, that's, look, just, just, just remember what I'm telling you. He said, you're a good driver and everything, and this, that, and the other. So he cleaned the grease off, and we went on, and he never said anything else about it. Then another time he got me is when we was down in uh, Rado, Texas. And he told me, he said, look, I want you, to, want you to just drive and then get to the shipper. Drive up to the shipper. He said, just make a left, make another left, make a right, and you're there. He said, I'm going to catch a nap. So what he did was he fastened himself into the seat. He said, I'm just going to sit back. I'm going to catch a nap. If you need me, wake up. Now, I should have caught on, but I was too focused on learning the craft because I took it really seriously. So he acted like he was sleeping like the whole time, and I'm driving around in circles for like two hours, and he woke up. Like I was hitting and slamming on the brakes, and he was didn't wake up. I shouldn't do something then. And I'm like sweating. And he up, like woke up like, where are we at? How long have we been riding around for? For two hours, and he was like, "He's like, move, move, move." He switched, and we pulled up and got us right there. The whole time he was he was playing around with me, and I didn't know he no sold it the whole time. Uh, what was the last one he did? So you was yeah. So you was this time where he he said he was gonna fall asleep or he was pretending to be asleep. Yeah, he was. But acting he like was he, already. He was but you guys sleep, was already but, was already at the place. He just. He just had you to go yeah. around in circles. Yeah. He had me drive around in circles two hours so he could laugh at me. So, I mean, you know, I, I see he's a prankster, 
and everything. Yeah. And I, I, I guess you, you know, you pretty much caught on to it. But at that time, it had to be frustrating. Like, bro, what, it what was. the hell? You know what? You know what was frustrating after the fact? Because he was driving back, and I was finishing up. He was telling me how good I'm doing. He said, "You're a myth for this business." He said, "You know, your uncle taught you well." He said, you'll have great success in this business. I was like, well, I do around for two hours, and now you're saying I'm a bit missed for this business. And he's just like, he said, don't say anything to the dispatch or anything, but I, I was just playing I was just playing with you the whole time. I, I ready to, I'm ready to bust him right in his head. I looked at him. No, I was driving. I just turned around and looked at him. And, you know, took my eyes off the road. He said, keep your eyes on the road. He said, this is the Rio. He said, he said, I, I said, he said, he said, I was bored. He said, I don't, he said, I just had to start messing with me. But he said, he, he just did it out of boredom. I'm like, really? But it's he used not, to have these locks. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 go ahead. No, what he had, like, no, oh, okay. Well, what, um, remember, I remember you showed a video of guys having padlocks on the truck. So he used to have all these locks sitting on his truck and he used to, and then, he was telling me, like, you know, I said, what are those padlocks for? You forgot your keys? <laughs> or you keep getting your locks or locks, you know. They just teach humility. He said, when you, every time you're out on the road, always try to be respectful. He said, because somebody will teach you some humility. He was the one of the type of guys who padlock your, <laughs> padlock your trailer and cut your seals. Uh, cut your seals is a kiss of death enough. But why are you going to padlock it on top of that? Uh, no, nah, he, he would have. Yeah, he he would have been. He, he them hands would have been all on him if 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 somebody would have called him. Oh my! All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He, all he, right. He, he, was, he was a slick one. <laughs> all right, Cass. So you've been in the so you've been in the game for about twenty years. So you came in uh, in the millennial. So you, you know there's yeah. you know or, there's uh, different. You know or, my old school drivers will say you know there's different. You know, there's different errors versus, you know, coming in doing the millennial and then coming in doing their time. Uh, what have I mean, what have all changed for you? You know what I'm saying? We already you know, you here in the time of ELDs, automatics, uh, you know, truckers having having attitudes during the time that you coming in. What have what have all you experienced uh, through 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 the twenty years in the millennial that you've been driving? Well, the ELDs was coming in in like ninety eight. I was still in, I was coming out of high school then, and I remember guys was complaining about the ELDs and having the uh, the uh, what's that the uh, the tracer the satellite that sit on the top used to sit on the top of the trucks there, but now they. Um, uh, that was, that was, I knew that was going to be the new norm. Um, now that you still could get away with a lot of stuff, even back then, you can still run it. A lot of places were still using paper logs before the ELDs came full effect. Uh, a lot of times the kids down the other day, they have it easy, bro. Driving these automatic trucks is like driving a car. I could put my I could put one of my kids in one of these trucks and teach them how to drive it and they'll learn how to drive a truck straight ahead. I mean, with the backing, you still need some skill, but it was way easier. Like I had to learn how to double clutch. Well, my uncle taught me some of the stuff um, off the record, like how to double clutch and how to back up, which was the hardest part. Of course, with a lot of people, the backing up was, you know, it could be it could be it could be challenging at sometimes, but all simple situations is different. Another, the other way uh, the business has changed is you couldn't, you had to be over the road to do a local job. Now you come out of school and get a local job, and that was unheard of back then. You had to have like, like at least six months to a year to get a local job, let alone a regional. You know what I mean? Now you just get it right off the bat and make eighty thousand dollars off eighty thousand a year. I mean, when I started at MSK Carries, I think it's twenty eight cents at a twenty eight cents a mile. I couldn't I couldn't work for twenty eight cents a mile in, in today's time. But when yeah, I started that's out, un, yeah. that's unheard of today. Like twenty eight cents a mile. I mean, there's still there's still some companies out there that is offering that little amount. But 
you know now with yeah. the you know now with 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 the way the economy is and all like that i i can't see how anybody could live off a of, off a of 28 cent a mile man that's that's on yeah. all right kid man so, got me. oh oh go ahead no 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 i said well with that 28 cents a mile i was like there ain't no money in this mess i'm like where's a thousand dollars and two thousand dollars where you can make a week Nah, bro. And you should no, never listen. Never yeah. listen. Never listen to what they be talking about online, man. Because they be bragging. They be sugarcoating. You know, they they be talking oh, about. Yeah. You know, they. You know, it's it's the internet, man. People people could perceive themselves as anything. Hey, I'm an owner operator making about ten k. No, I k a week and all like that. And then then when you see the reality of you in a you in a company truck making 28 cent a mile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> See, back then, it was just work. Because, like, places like Swift, they'll train you, but, you know, I know Swift was popular back then because a friend of mine, he was trained in there, but Swift bought out MS Carries after a while. By the time they bought out all the MS Carries, then I went to Warner, and I ran for Warner. Then I got sick of that, and I left better. So I went to start driving school buses. Then I was driving school buses for a little bit. Got tired of that. Some kids were getting on my nerves. Um, then I started doing a uh, garbage truck. Then right after that, I did that for a few years. I enjoyed that tremendously. It's a really good job uh, driving a uh, roll off, picking up dumpsters and stuff. Then I went from there. Then guess what I did? What well, we just talked about? I fell into the hype of. Uh, when the COVID hit, hey, man, yo, buddies of mine, yo, Kenneth, man, you better get out here. You're making all this money, all this money. I said, look, I left I left the truck in business. I still grow, but I said, I left the truck in business better after, you know, Warner and Napa and places like that. I left better. So, he, man, we making all this money, this, that, and the other. So, what I had to do, I had to go back to school, get a, since I've been out of an A so long, I had to go get my, uh, 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 some guys might hear this like, well, you haven't been trucking for 23 years. Dude, I've been having a CDL. I've been having my CDL for 23 years. And on top of that, I did side businesses with stuff that did stuff under the table from friends of my uncle. Right. So you, so you've I been driving. A trailer, you know what so I mean? You, you, you've been driving on and on and off, but you mentioned you had to go back. Yeah. And get your, you had to go back to school. Go back to school for what? What? Yo, you let your CDL expire? What? What happened? No, no, no. I still had my CDL, but once you've been out of, see around here, once you be out of, once you been out of an A for so long, you had to go get recertified. So they couldn't document the times. So when they start coming out with this, uh, the F, the FFCA, whatever it's called, the, the clearinghouse stuff. They only can track your, if you have over 20 years experience, they only can track your experience past, you know, the, the, to, when they come up with that stuff, we had to document it. You had to go to a job from one job to another. It was like, what, 2016? You started doing all that? So you, so you had your CDLA, but you stepped out of the business for a while. Yeah. And in order yeah. to, so, so you was dropped down to what, a B? No, I still had my A because I, I always drove. Oh, you know, you don't have to drop down to a B, but you had to get recertified. Oh, you, so, so you had to go you know, back. Even to, though you had your A, you had to get, yeah, you had to go get recertified. So you had to go and get. You had to do a refresher course. Oh, you had, yeah, to, you refresh had to do a refresher course. course. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, now, yeah. Now yeah. I understand because I'm over here like, if you got your CDLA, you have your cdla the only the only from what i understand and i'm not sure if it's true or not but this is from what i gathered from ohio because i'm from ohio if you don't yeah. if you drop your uh your dlt med certification if you don't get it certified uh after a while i think they'll drop you down to a b on on that oh, i'm me? not yeah i'm not sure that's only from yeah, what they, i heard but they drop you down to a c yeah they, they drop you down together. to a c yeah 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 yeah, yeah they drop you they down to a together. c if you don't have your uh your your med card sort of uh certification updated all right all right
sit with me, Cato. Yeah. I always kept that updated, so I always went through, always was able to keep it because I always had every job I had. It was a CDL job. Oh, okay. You know, okay. so. All right, so Kevin, so that's why man. I always kept it. Uh, near death experience. I mean, near death. What what happened, bro? Woo. I mean, there's, I'm still, uh, you know, there's. I'm still feeling the effects of it. There's, you know, this, this is trucking, and, you know, it's unfortunate that a lot of. A lot of social media guys out here just just put this as a trend and don't think that it's it's not a dangerous uh it's not a dangerous job. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. what what happened with you, my guy? See when people still tend to uh think think they're cool, that truck will show you that you're not. I was I was taught that at a, as soon as I got into the business and I was like, you know what? That's the truth. See, what happened was I decided, you know, after I got recertified, um, not recertified, after I did my refresher course, knocked that out of the park, I went to drive for a company out of uh, Wisconsin called LCL Bulk Transport. And uh, what they do, what they mostly do is, you know, they do chocolate haul and cocoa butter and stuff. It's a tanker company. So when I started with them um see i never crossed you we all know the dangers of uh trucking but when we it's like being a police officer when you step out of the house you know the dangers but you don't really focus on it because it's just like another day at the office for you so that was my first week of training at lcl when that happened um uh, the trainer i was with his name's nick and um I asked him to come on so we could do a free one on the podcast, but he can't, right? He can't because of, you know, legal reasons. So he was driving and we were just talking, you know, laughing and joking. And uh, this was on a, uh, I think it was a Thursday that this happened. So we going up 81. Um, we was going to a place up there to pump off a load of chocolate. We, we uh, loaded out of Hershey. So as we was driving, he was telling me the prior day, like I knew about 81. 81 is a, is a dangerous first dangerous stretch of road. Cause it's, you get freak snowstorms out of nowhere. You get freak rainstorms. You get guys who don't, can't drive or for nothing out there. So he was telling me, so I hate 81. He said, man, it's always an accident. It's always a fatal accident. I said, well, we're going to, we're going to hope that there's no accidents today. So, as we was going up, we was going up an upgrade um, at the, uh, it was uh, Pitts Pottsville. And um, all of a sudden, we, we seen like a little bit of snow flurries. So he said, all right, well, I'm going to slow it down and put his flashers on. Then it got real, 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 like where the visibility was so deep. You couldn't see from the, from the front of your truck and anything that's in front of you because it was foggy and it was snowing. So as he slowed down, he, he had it all the way down to like 35 miles an hour. Why right? people were flying, flying ahead of us. So as we came up to a complete stop, uh, it, was a, it was clearly an accident in the middle of the road. And we pulled up to a container truck. We pulled up to a, it was a, a U.S. food truck that was off on the side. And we came, came to a we came to a stop, and no other reason by his driving, we're both still alive. So he was able to stop and not, you know, rear end the truck that was ahead of us. So we came to a stop. In my mind, I'm like, hmm, this is the beginnings of a pileup. And oh, behold, my trainer said, he said, oh, hold on, dude, and we get smashed behind by two trucks. At the time, I didn't know it was two trucks until I saw the uh, in cab footage. But a uh, owner operator and a box trucker. But what? Before they hit us, the ABF uh, uh, doubles crashed. He was speeding. He was doing like fucking sixty miles an hour. Had to be in the snow because you know LTL guys always speed. <laughs> so they got to keep it. Yeah, they always they got to keep it. They got to keep it time. I mean, my cousin does LTS. Slow down. You ain't like you. They got to keep the time, and that's more so the companies doing that. So 
he came to a crash and halt, but he went to, went off over to the side on, um, we was in the right lane, he's in the left lane. So he realized that everything was stopped and it was an accident. He crashes off to the side on the, um, on the shoulder on the other side. Then that's when we got hit. And once we got hit, I said, yo, we get the fuck out of here. And he froze and he said, okay. And he just jumped out, jumped out behind me. Then I seen the FedEx truck crash behind me. Then I looked over as I was walking up to see where, where, where the accident happened. There's a, it was an off ramp. So we can get the higher ground from, you know, when everybody was crashing. So I hear the, uh, it was a lady that was between us and I heard her screaming. Those two people in that car, they're dead. They, they got burnt up. So the, the ABF truck, the real trailer, see a lot of them, they have hazmat and they'll, they'll have like, uh, fucking kerosene mixed with, Law furniture in a lot of their trailers. That's why you need hazmat to do those jobs. They mix everything together. So his his rear trailer caught fire, and Nick said he saw it. He said, I saw that. I saw I saw his trailer caught fire. And when we was hit, it hit our uh, fuel tank, and our fuel tank uh, uh, burst. So that caught fire on top of. It was people that was in between us. Um, I think it was a guy who was driving there was from Vermont. Because, you know, if you take 81, it's a quick way to get to Vermont instead of, you know, going the other way. So it was a, it was a guy in between us. Um, when, when all, when, because it's like, it, when it happened, it's like a, so much of a blur. And I just could see it played out. So when it was a it was a father and son who had a motorhome that had like propane on the on the back. You you seen one of my videos? You can hear hear me and me and Nick talk to the uh, father and son. And he said, "Yeah, we had propane we was carrying." So that could be a uh, another factor to the fire and the explosions that happened. So when we jumped out as we was walking up the hill, um, it was I seen people just jumping out of the records and stuff and running up and taking higher ground. And it was just the hearing the eerie silence and the, the boom one after another, after another, after another, after another, it seemed like it was never ending. And the only reason why is because people was, was speeding, you know, these guys out here today, and that's another thing that changed about the business. You get guys out here on good, on a good day. They, I mean, they coming up mountains and hills and inclement weather. They drive faster, but on a good day, they don't drive that fast. I don't get it. You know, and it was because everybody was driving way over the speed limit. You know, it wasn't just the ABF guy. It was just a lot of people. That FedEx guy, I seen him crash into me. The dude that took the video. See, after that, um, but then they uh, start, you know, the police was called. Uh, you remember seeing the, 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 the tow truck? Remember in one of the videos, the tow truck, the big red tow truck that, that came past? And they had the guy on, um, interviewing on the, uh, the local TV, on the local news station. But well, that asshole was fucking speeding and riding on the shoulder. Then he act like he was, he was there at the scene first. Well, yeah, of course he was, because <laughs> he was speeding to get ahead, get ahead of all of us to get to that accident ahead of us. So this was so so this was all on eighty one uh, up in the yeah. up in the northeast. How long ago was this? Yep. Last year. Jeez, just last in year. In March. Huh? In March. Yep. In March. Uh, people wonder why I'm still doing this. <laughs> doing I the, so this I got so the, PTSD so, and everything. So the accident, uh, the the accident, of course, caused the pile up. Um, yeah. and you was lucky. You know what th- caused it? What caused you know, it? You know what they say? What caused it? What, what old man say? panic and stopped. Uh-huh. On top of there was a snow squall. When the snow squall hit, snow squalls only last like twenty minutes, twenty thirty minutes, if that. When that hit, an old man panicked and slammed on his brakes and caused all that hell. Wow. 
Well, Kev, man, I'm, hey, thank you very much for sharing that, man. That's, that's crazy. Uh, of course, uh, being that it was a pile up the way it was, I'm sure it was it's, it's articles all over the internet about it. Where, it where, where they can, where, where they can find uh, said articles at, man? You know, let's pull up on YouTube, uh, Interstate 81, Pennsylvania pile up. You'll see our truck burnt up. They thought we died, but they didn't know we got out. They, did you hear a girl say, "Oh, the tanker truck blew up." There ain't no hazardous materials in that truck other than milk chocolate. Yeah, 45,000 pounds of milk chocolate. But our truck burnt down all the way down to the uh, the cab. The trailer was the trailer is uh, sitting up at a lot somewhere, but the trailer got burnt up, got damaged. But the cab of the truck was burnt all the way down to the ground. We could have been in it. Um, you could have been. The company? Oh, yeah. You don't realize you could have died after all the smoke is cleared. And I had to go get checked for PTSD. The company paid for it. The company paid for LCL. Um, they paid for my medical bills. Anything I needed, they paid for it. Anything I lost in the truck, they paid for it for both of us. They paid me my full week salary for training. They took care of me the whole step of the way. They called ass. The uh, owner called me and asked me if I was all right. Called both of us, actually. Um, a lot of people said I didn't believe I was in it when I posted it. And I said, yeah, I was in that. I was in, I was in the ground zero of it. The odds of you surviving the beginnings of a pileup, like, uh, it's, <laughs> look at the odds. That's where all the fatalities are. I'm surprised there's not more fatalities than that. I mean, I still hear that lady screaming. I can still hear her screaming. So, I mean, I can still see the people they pulled out of they pull out of the wreckage. Kev, man, I ooh, thank God, man. I thank God. Thank God for that, bro. Yes, I mean, that's <sighs> so it's after a, after, after, everything, you, I, I was, after everything after you got out of that. Uh, I, I I know you said that you know people still asking you like well, why are you still driving I mean like after after an experience like that bro uh, I mean you know you went for PTSD but did you have any other did you have any like nightmares or you you had any oh, did, yeah. did you have something on the side oh, yeah. of your shoulder that tells you like no I don't want to do this anymore. Um, no, not really. I was ready to come. I was, I knew what I signed up for, but I don't think I could do another one of those. That will actually will kill my career. A lot of people ask me, I am very cautious when I'm out and like driving in the rain. Cause I do a lot of Northeast stuff. That's basically the company I'm with now. I do a lot of Northeast stuff in uh South, South Northeast. So I'm up in that area all the time. And what what was funny was the same load we had <laughs> in that accident. We got it back a week later to finish my trading. <laughs> I'm like, serious. Wow. <laughs> the same load out of Hershey. Going back to the same place and we had to go past the area where we almost died in. And I'm like, did that did I'm that bring did said, that bring any did did that bring any like hostile memories. I mean, did you tell you? Did you yes, tell them like? Did. did you tell them like like when you got there? Like, no, I, I'm 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 sorry. I'm gonna have to pull over to the side of the road, and y'all gonna have to come and get this trailer. Well, um, honestly, no. Me and me, me, me and uh, my trader both we pushed on to try to tone it out. But it was it was weird because every time we went past that spot, we got we just got real quiet. Like they go to they go they go to dark spot for the fire. We just got real 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 quiet until we got past it. And he was we were both like man, we got the same load going up to the same place. I've been done more. <sighs> he said, man, this must be a sick joke or something like that. Hi, um, my name is Peter Parker, and I. Like a coffee.
please. Okay, no problem, Peter Parker. I know for a fact he he really got hurt. He got hurt pretty bad, and he got hurt worse than me. And because the truck and a box truck hit on his side, and both of them died. They said the guy in the um, I think it was a Swift owner operator. They said he was laying on the. They said he was laying on the uh, the uh, the engine, laying on top of the engine column, and he burnt to death holding on to his cross. That's what I heard. Um, that there was two people that was in the box truck. Uh, it was a husband and wife team, and they basically just got that box truck and just started a business because he just got out of jail and needed to make some money. Well, they burked up. They're gone. It was two passengers in that car. Where I heard that lady screaming. Uh, they they're both gone. Um, surprisingly, wasn't that many uh uh. uh fatalities in that accident but um it does it did change my driving in inclement weather um it plays in the back of my mind because i was stuck on a mountain uh what was it like a like a month a month or so ago off of 77 coming out of north carolina it was a truck bad truck accident and it was foggy and we was up on a up uh on a coming out of north soon as you get out of north carolina you get up go up a mountain to go into virginia um, there was a bad truck accident. Everything came to a complete stop. And you see a, uh, there was a lot of dense fog. There was just no snow. It was raining. And I got nervous. And I just kept looking behind me. I said, man, if somebody don't fail to stop, I'm out of this truck. I mean, there's like nowhere for me to go because we got lucky that time. I mean, it was a blessing we got out of there. Uh, but I don't know about it. I could do a second one. I don't go looking for those and don't want one again. It, it, bo- it did bother my driving to a degree. It didn't, want me, it didn't make me want to quit the business. Um, a lot of people would say, I would have quit. I would have quit. I would have done. I would have quit. I'm like, nah, I've been in it too long. I said, but it did make me very more cautious, a, a more cautious driver. Like, I look for snow any step of the way. If it, I don't like other trucks around me while I'm driving and stuff. It, it, it makes you way more cautious than what than what the job requires. You know what I mean? And you can't be over cautious. It really really hurts yourself out here. I try not to let that. You know. You know. I try and really try not to let that uh, over overstep my judgment. But I could just tell you, um, it does. It mentally it did something to me. All right, um, man. Well, again, I'm, you know I, I mean? I'm, 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 I'm definitely glad that you're, that you're all right. Um, and, and experiencing an accident, a traumatic accident like that, really, really does something to you as a truck driver. And I mean, after experiencing something like that, and you see all these crazy videos, what? What 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 people doing crazy things inside and outside of their trucks? How how did that how, how did that make you how, how did that make you feel as, uh, as a truck driver that experienced that been out here as long as you've been out here and experienced a traumatic accident that you experienced? How how do you feel about these these truck drivers coming out here saying oh this is you know this is easy all you got to do is just get your cdl and you can come out here and make all this bag and you don't have nothing to worry about let me tell you those, to, to those fucking morons who think you want to come out here and want to play truck drivers and stuff like that when i when you think you're cool that truck's going to show you that you're not mark my words uh till you roll a truck i seen a guy the other day he was coming down the mountain and it was pouring down rain like fucking 80 miles an hour. I said, yeah, you roll that damn truck, you won't do it no more. They have, they roll one truck or be in an accident the way I did in. Yeah, their way of thinking. Well, you know, cause I used to be like that. I used to thought I was tough shit when I was in my 20s starting out in this business. You know, I thought I was tough shit. Did everything on the speed. Well, they, you know, MS carriage truck didn't go that fast. But yeah, I thought I was top, top shit until I had my first fuck up. Then it was like, oh, it's getting real. You know what I mean? You get, you get a lot of these people who's getting into this business. I always make this joke. I say, you know what? You know, because we got these TikTok guys, that's, you know, that's the reason why these freight rates are down. 
Yeah, I mean, I always make this joke. And it's just like the people, they, it's too many people getting into it because they made it so easy for you to make, you know, to get a truck nowadays. Like anybody could go be a lease purchase and think they're a big time motor operator. I find it funny that a lot of guys on YouTube who had these big behind companies talk about how easy it, how easy they was making eight thousand dollars a week for doing nine hundred miles and bullshit like that. I find it funny when the freight rates went down, they was all selling their business, talking about, oh, yeah, we're done. I'm like, oh really? So you can't so you can't survive unless when things are up, but when things are down, you close up shop. I find that hilarious. And people really need to respect these vehicles, but these trucks will hurt you. I don't play. I don't when I'm out there and I'm on the road, I make it I make it look easy. You and I both can make it look easy, but at the same time I'm I'm very cautious of what I'm doing. I'm watching everything. You know, that's how I was trained, trained to do the business. Always watch your surroundings. Don't underestimate don't underestimate the vehicle. The minute you underestimate that vehicle is gonna show you that you're wrong. And you're either gonna hurt somebody or kill somebody. It's a lot more. It's funny that it's a lot more accidents now than what I can remember. Like every every time you go from one state to another, is like you might see two or three accidents involving a truck. So you know the guys that they're traded. It's funny when I was in get my refresher course, they just teach those guys how to look straight ahead. Like there's more than one mirror on the truck. And me and my uh, instructor used to get into it. I'm like, let's look at the mirrors on the hood. I said, there's more than one mirror on the truck. I look at all my mirrors. You can't teach me how to drive. I already know how to drive. And it was, became a big thing. But everybody else who, who who were rookies, they look straight ahead. They don't see any other mirrors on their truck, or they just they just look at the, the ones on your hood. They look they straight ahead and don't see anything else. They don't yeah. keep they they don't keep their head on a swivel. That's that's what I was taught. No, uh, when I was, yeah, that's what I was taught when I was in school. Always keep your head on a swivel. You know, every, every five to ten seconds, you know, you look in your right, your left, go across the go across the windshield, back over to the left, to the right. And, you know, you just yep. constantly being aware of your surroundings, man. So, but yeah, yeah, that, oh, yeah. I, I bet I, when you, I bet when you ride out the road, you can be talking and talking, you know, have your headset on and talking, and you know where your truck is. You know, you got a handle on things. You know who's around you mm-hmm. at all times. You know what I mean? Even in, even in and your blind, true. even in your blind spots, you you should always know that you know when you happen to look over to your right and look in your Corvette. A lot of you guys don't know what that means, but that's the bottom mirror. Mm-hmm. And you happen to notice yep. that there's a there's a little pinto that's riding on the side of your door. Like, bruh, you could go in you and pass that right. me now. <laughs> you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So and you, and you know and you know you gotta use these mirrors rocking up rocking out over here uh in the east northeast. Mm-hmm. But you gotta <laughs> use your mirrors at all times. All times, man. Oh yeah. Man, yeah, Kevin. You gotta watch everybody and everything. Man, Kevin, thank you very much for coming on, man, and sharing your uh, sharing your testimony, man. I really do appreciate it. All right, man. Um, All right. How can uh, you you mentioned you you mentioned the video and in, uh, in YouTube several times in your story, man? Go ahead and uh, shout out your YouTube and where they can actually you know if you posted it or anything oh, well. like that. Go ahead and shout out your. Uh, well, Your YouTube, man. What I, what I YouTube is just my kids playing wrestling video games on it and stuff like that. <laughs> I post stuff on it from time to time, but that's just what they do. They they they, they make wrestling and they post it up on there, so it's, oh, okay. I use it from time to time as you know for me to bond with them. Okay, but I'm not a big YouTuber like a lot of the guys you have on here. All right. Well, I appreciate. Hey, I, I appreciate the story. Uh, I appreciate the story and the support, man. Thank you very much. All right. I appreciate that. All right. You have a good one. Big G's got it locked. Boy. Want you to love me all night? Yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet? Yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G? Yeah, don't make a sound.